What up guys and girls, another brand new video coming at you today. We are back for some more league racing on the channel. We're back once again for Dynamic Nights Esports for their Tier 1 oh, Platinum Series back on F1 2020. This is Season 2 actually of uh, Dynamic Nights Esports. Now of course, you will look, and uh, well and truly knows, we'll look at the, uh, watch the qualifying highlights. Uh, you probably will be aware that um, Season 1 on F1 2020 for Dynamic Nights Esports uh, for, well, the master tier, the tier that I took part in uh, the, for the last season, uh, got cut short after only seven rounds due to the lack of numbers. But there was um, the other tiers that were below the uh, master tier. They uh, they carried on as normal, so uh, and they got to finish off their season because they had quite good numbers there in the end. As you can see here, I've actually run out of fuel, so that's a nice way to end off a qualifying session here. So. Um, and uh, but, uh, if you look on my channel, there should be actually some commentary POVs from the, uh, I can't remember what tier, I think it was like Diamond tier that I was doing along with, uh, well, to start with, it was with Tau, but then obviously I decided to finish the last few ra the races of the season. So go check them out. They'll be somewhere on the channel, probably in the Dynamic IT Sports um, playlist. But um, yeah, we're back again. This has now been renamed as T1 Platinum. Now, of course, there's obviously... There's going to be a lot of drivers, but they've obviously just settled on the one tier for this season. So um, we're doing, and, and now obviously this season, I'm actually a reserve driver. So we're so on the, uh, this is on the Monday, right, this was on the, the Monday nights uh, oh, as well the for race. memory. So uh, uh, as you can see here, for qualifying, on? obviously I, I we, well, we were going to start from the back anyway. I, the I actually joined one late to the lobby. One. I might have actually fallen asleep or forgotten well, about it or something. Might have actually fallen asleep knowing me. What the hell but I um, last time. yeah, you can see, obviously, I was just getting a bit of a sense really during qualifying uh, for the we'll setup, uh, well, that sort of thing, and uh, just getting a bit of a, a rhythm going. But uh, to be fair, I was going to start from the back and just try pretty much a last to first challenge. Well, as we set off for the formation lap, now, you probably would have noticed actually during quality that I actually, uh, well, I didn't actually set a lap time, but I ended up uh, finishing in 18th because I think uh, Blocky might have got disqualified from memory. But um, yeah, for some unknown reason, this game is so weird to say the least. Um, it put me back to last anyway. Not that it was going to matter anyway. This oh blocky, blocky just puts it into the fence for some unknown reason. It was a just bit weird of what he was doing there. Happens. I don't think that was intentional in any way, shape, or form. But um, I felt it was going to be. But this was going to be a nice practice. way to like to stuff from the back and to see where we end up, I suppose. So we're starting pretty much Probably from we'll start dead last position here. Back. This is Resumes round. For this is actually four. the second round. If I haven't mentioned Next it already. Week, I think it will be. Uh, around we'll Australia. I can't do, remember the first we? round. I think the first round was France from memory, which amazing our one, but he's now got back to a reserve from memory. So here we go for round two here in Australia. Five red lights. Let's do it around the Albert Park Grand Prix circuit. It's an okay start. I wasn't going to do anything silly here. I just thought, let's just not go hell for leather into turn one. Let's just see what occurs here because there's always going to be a lot of carnage usually at the first couple of corners. We just take it nice and cautiously. Can't quite get around. I think that Snickers bud in the racing point. The uh, there's the mustard gas this in one. the Alpha Romeo. So we get past uh, Snickers bud here into turn three. Uh, sorry, yeah, there's turn three. Uh, around the outside of, uh, inside of X mustard gas. But obviously he turns to the outside, which doesn't really work out too well. Now, I will point out as well, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of drivers in this tier. So um, like majority of these guys probably are full-timers, but there's some others, which includes me, are being... Uh, uh, well, reserve drivers. So you can see a six Meg and Bodhod here. We're having a bit of an argument. Nelly go three wide there for one moment between Mustard, Gas, Bodhod, and Smeg. So I think there was a little bit of contact. Smeg goes wide. He started on the hards. There's Gala as the other yeah. Alpha and Male. There's cars literally every which way. You don't know which way to go. We get past Smeg, and we also get past Mustard, Gas, who I think also has got front wing damage. I think he slammed into the back of Smeg, so he might have to make an early pit stop. He did start on the soft compound tyres, so he could probably afford to make a bit of a pit, pit stop. So in the end, we've gained up four positions there. As you can see in the foreground, Bod Hod got a little bit sideways there, but made four positions up on the first opening lap. Let's look on board uh, with Bod Hod's uh, point of view. Now, obviously I will point out as well with uh, Bod Hod's POV, you'll hear a lot of different voices there because I think he was in a party chat from memory. So uh, you might hear if uh, is, there's probably some stuff that is not worthy for video. I sincerely apologize, but uh, you're just going to have to abide by it anyway. So uh, he goes up the inside, just obviously breaks a lot earlier. 
Get around the outside. There's obviously a mixture of, of who's starting on what throughout the, um, the the full 20 car grid, which is great to see a full 20 car grid compared to what we used to do in the well, last season to say, to say the least in master tier. Obviously, that was due to numbers and availability of people on you know certain days. Uh, here we go, Bothod trying to go for the run around the outside of Smeg, which is not an ideal position to be in, but I think uh, there wasn't any contact there, actually. I'm not sure whether Smeg could have gone anywhere else there, but... Um, Mate, he's throwing the nose in, Mustard. Please yeah. don't. Please back out, please back out, please back out. Yeah, probably a fair, yeah, I think it was a fair call in the end, and then he got hammered up the backside. Not sure what happened with Galos, to be honest, um, whether it was something that occurred there. It was somebody else, so not really too sure there, but um, back we go to our point of view. Slowly catching up to this group. Blocky, I think, made a little error in the Haas there. He's on the medium compounded tyres. So, like I said, there's a mixture of who's on what compounded tyres. I went for the hards because I felt like that would be the ideal situation. And then maybe go to set of sauce later on, you can see. I think Blocky may have got put off a little bit from where Dan the Racer broke, potentially. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but he missed his braking market by a little bit there. As I think Bot yeah, don't remind me, Jeff. I think Bonhoff's now got a three-second time penalty. I can't remember whether that was there or not before, but um, this is a bit of an interesting four-car battle group going on in front here. As you can see Blocky is going to be under attack from uh, Bonhoff here very shortly. Dan the race is in the foreground, and I can't work out the other racing point there. I think it's F1 boy, that other racing point. So you can see there's sort of groups starting to uh, phase out here. But uh, we're just sort of just taking it nice and cautiously. We don't want to do anything silly here. You can see Bonho gets a little bit sideways. And we get front wing damage. If you think you can get past, make use of the overtake button and see what you Not can the do. ideal way to say the least there, but um yeah, I mean I don't really know I don't think there was anything Bonhod could really do much uh, much wing. else really. That's what I'm trying to say, get my words out properly. But uh, I don't think there was much else Bonhod could do there. I think he just lost the back end there and Unfortunately, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So we come straight in, chuck on our new front well, wing, and give this a try. go on going onto a set of soft compounded tyres. Uh, obviously, this will change anyway, the strategy up we'll now, cover. considering we were planning on doing hards to soft compounded tyres. But uh, that plan's now got out the window now. But uh, good thing is here we've actually come out in pretty much fresh air here. So we'll actually have a look on board here with Bot Hot again. So he just just touches the back of Blocky oh, and then just gets onto the. The power, I think, a little bit too early, lost the back end, and unfortunately, like I said, I had nowhere to go there, unfortunately. So, um, as a Mustard Gas is now retired, he's done that in the pit lane. So, um, basically, yeah, now this has changed, yes, like I said, it's changed our strategy. So, we're just pretty much going to go nuts on these sort of soft cop out of tires, maybe hope for a safety car. Meanwhile, going on further up the road uh, here, this is Bod Hot and Blocky again. And of course, Dan the Racer. So, everyone's on mix, soft, medium, and hard so around this. These guys, Blocky gets a good run here. No, oh, no, Dan the racer nearly squeezes him off the road Jeez. there, and Bodhoff will take full advantage of that. Yeah, that would have been a little bro. bit cheeky there from Dan. I don't really know what else you could do there. You probably had to uh, see the position there. Soft compounded tyres might have been starting to die off at this point. They can go a relatively good way in this race. As Blocky and F1 boy having a bit of a battle here as well. That's for 12th and 13th, I think, is. Bonhoff's in 14th position, so I don't think Bonhoff's quite got the run here. But uh, back to our point of view. So, yeah, we're basically just going hell for leather here. Maybe just hoping for a safety car. Maybe might save us as we pick up our first three-second time penalty of the race. It's a safety car because F1 Boy is now out of the Grand Prix. And uh, just get looking at the mini-map. Of course it would happen, wouldn't it? I was, I was predicting that this sort of th the safety car was going to happen somewhere along the line of this race. Sometime. Better be Just one or a few. Where. I knew it was going to happen. It looks like he's crashed at turn the fast left right hander at turn 11 and 12. Let's look aboard with Bod Hod because he was actually right behind F1 board at the time. Yeah, it just gets it oh, too wide there on the exit curb at turn 12. And unfortunately, to the end. not where else to go except into yeah, the wall off, there. So, uh, and now at this point of the Grand Prix, I was toying with the idea about what I should do here because now the strategy is changing up again. I actually said the fastest first sector, uh, obviously on the on lap start of lap five, but now we're straight into the pit lane. That Snickers, but uh, F1 boys teammate is also into the pit lane. So we're going to try and have a gamble here and Come go on, guys, onto a set doing? of medium compound of tyres. Fortunately, the, the crew were not ready for me because obviously I think they were also servicing, I think a lot of people actually, we get a 
we get a bit of a jump there. Oh, we get the jump, obviously, on stickers, bud. My, my word, I'm all over the shop here at the moment. But, no, the, what I was trying to say is, is a lot of people came in under this safety car. So, uh, and, of course, obviously, uh, teammate is OP Magic. Of course, he's a regular in... Uh, in this tier so uh, obviously he got priority because he's a lot further up the road compared to me so uh but uh we get a Man. stupid penalty there that was uh not the ideal way to get a, a time penalty under the safety car to say the least so um yeah it certainly wasn't ideal uh to uh, be stuck uh, the pit crew take all their time to actually get the uh, the pit stop done and dusted but um I mean, in the end, we did get the jump on stickers, but and we kept ahead of uh, Galas, who, who saw it now back into this race. So now we're still in position one, 16 yeah, okay. in this race, but uh, now everything, everybody's now it comes out again, uh, and we crowded up it. again. Or what, what's the better word? There? I can't actually quite remember. As F1 boys left the session, obviously he's now he's DNF. So, um, but again, yeah, we're just going to take things cautiously here. There's a long, long way to go. We're only about to start lap eight of 29 laps around this place. So. Uh, You've got Stone Towel in front of us. He's on the soft compound tyre, so no doubt he'll have to stop again. Honest Crook, also a bit further up the road in the Haas. He's on the medium compound tyres. I'm going to try and maybe take these hards to the end. As there's a bit of a kerfuffle here between Honest Crook and Stone Towel. There was a lot of lag on my screen. Now, fortunately, I did collect Stone Towel as well. It was no a bit of an AI happened, uh, car there for, for me, so um, I don't think I actually had the chance there. I, I, I do apologise to uh, to uh, to Prezzo for that one, but I mean, uh, there was pretty much nothing there I could do. I mean, yes, the lag wasn't ideal to say the least. My internet connection has not been the best, but it has been improved. There's cars going every which way, but teammates off the road. Uh, that's K Walkers in the the Williams car there, so I think they might have come together. There's all <laughs> a lot of stuff going on here. Maggie and one of the Red Bulls there. I'm not sure, quite sure which one it is. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell here. It's a bit, I think that's Lunacy, actually. He comes into the no pit lane, so going on. he must have got some front wing damage because he's straight into the lane. and Obviously, he's on the soft combat tyre, so he could probably afford to uh, change up the strategies. We try to get a good run here on Honest Crook. Yeah, didn't quite nail it. But we didn't quite nail it, as you can hear from the background on my screen there. So uh, it's uh, always he gets a little bit of contact oh, there as we pretty much die ding-dong. Uh, way through turn three and four there, but uh, thankfully we managed to save the that. car through there and managed to avoid getting front wing damage. You can oh, see wow. there, the engine's the actually starting to revving. overheat as well a little bit there. But uh, yeah, like I said before, I do apologize to Prezzo there. Uh, there's pretty much nothing I do there as Kay Walkers gets very sideways I mean, off turn 13, loses a spot there to uh, Honest Crook. So yeah, in all of that dramas, we're now up into 13th place. No, hard to believe here. It's still 20-odd laps to go here in this Australian Grand Prix. Green flags behind. I think there might have been a spinner. I'm not sure who the spinner was there in the end. I'm not sure exactly whether Prezzo actually got some damage or not from uh, whether he had the contact with, um, with I think it was Snickers. But no, yeah, I think it was Snickers, but I can't actually remember. As you can see, I'm getting very, very sideways coming out of uh, turn 10 there. It was a common theme throughout this race, to say the least. Obviously trying to make up some ground while it can. As there's another yellow flag. Big Ooh, crash, Blue wow. Dogs in the wall at turn 12, exit at turn 12. I was thinking at this that point, that's gotta be a safety car to say the least, Three considering charges. the other ones have been, and it is yeah, a safety like car once safety again. Car so now what do we do here? I think uh, we might have another fresh set of mediums up our sleeve here. And we're gonna take advantage of this by the looks of it, so and I think at this point, the mediums could definitely go to the end as I don't know what was going on there. Honest Crook, whether he was coming into the pit lane or not, or whether he decided to change it last minute, was we follow Kay Walkers into the pit lane as well. As Dan the Racer has gone on to the hard cop at tyres, I think. Oh, sorry, OP. Yeah, and unfortunately for uh, Alpha Tauri, which uh, if, it, if you haven't already noticed, I'm driving the Alpha Tauri for this race. Um, obviously, with OP spinning out earlier on, considering he was higher up the grid a bit earlier in this race, he's now, and he had to spin, he's now behind me and had to pretty much double stack there. And uh, that's not really going to help his position, especially considering in the championship as well. No, it's a bit early on in the race there anyway. But uh, we'll look at some replays from that last, after that last safety car restart. So uh, Blocky and Blue Dog, we go, literally go side by side up to the control line there before the green flags wave. And, Bocky takes uh, full advantage of oh, that one there, and he does. So up into, uh, well, the second place in this race. Yeah, he's a slow-mo here, then. 
You can obviously see there was a lot of lag on my screen there, but there was contact between Otis Crook and Stone Tau. And you know, as you can see there, by the time that I could maybe try and take avoiding action there, unfortunately, yes, Prezo's, Tau, uh, Prezo's car was uh, pretty much in the wrong place at the wrong time. So like I said, I do apologize to Prezo about that one. Blue Dog goes very sideways through turn 11 and 12. How have you saved that, mate? That is godly. What, what a save that was. For, uh, for Blue Dog, uh, that was actually, I think, a lap or two earlier, but uh, that, the second time around, it didn't really... It was the second time around, it wasn't so fortunate, so Blocky comes in. Uh, Bodhot, I think he was originally going to come in, but uh, decided uh, on second best as we nearly slam up the back of the Williams car there of Kay Walkers there, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, Bodhot obviously took the bollard out, but uh, he's been unsure about what to do here because he's obviously he started on the hard cop out of tyres. So, and, and as ACW, I don't think he really took advantage of that under the safety car. So, well, the last couple of times it's been wrong place, wrong time when the safety cars come out. So, easy boy. You know, yeah, when easy, he mate. obviously, start, I think ACW has probably been majority leading this race, but uh, every time the safety car has been called out, uh, fortunately he's been a bit further down the road and compared to where everybody else was obviously they, they took advantage of it under uh, the uh, yeah, uh, to pit lane under it? the safety car so now acw has got a bit of work to do here from pretty much the mid pack if not the back of the pack so as we get ready to go That's here for another restart here so it is lap about to start lap 13 of 29 we haven't even reached halfway race distance yet you see now that oh, nearly oh, three really wide moment really here that's a Snickers bud in the racing point as he gets a little shove out of the way there from uh, Kay Walkers there. Not a bit Dan the race was also in that battle. So uh, there's another free spot there. I'm not sure what happened to Snickers bud. Hopefully he hasn't got any front wing damage from that. So a little bit of attack there I think from our teammate, but uh, no can do there. Not letting him go quite go through here. It's uh, a key through this part here is to just try and well stay with Quokkas and Sick. Uh, we can try and get past him as quick as he can while we've got this grid as we're a little bit of kerfuffle in the background there there's a yellow flag and uh, I think uh, Prezo might have been as we get a little bit of contact there with K Walkers as we uh, very very sideways once again out of turn 10 that was like I said of earlier a oh, God, common damage. theme from this and yeah I'm very very surprised at the amount of contacts contact that I've had throughout this race how I haven't picked up any front wing damage at all so uh uh, but, well, besides that little contact with Bodhot early in the race, obviously, but uh, yeah, I think, like I said, Stone Tell uh, was the one that got spun, or somebody spun him. I'm not really sure, or he spun himself. One of those two, anyway. So, a mess. Galaz and I think Dan the race has now cleared Galaz and that Alpha Romeo. Now, obviously, there's quite a bit of different strategies run right up and down the grid. Now, Galaz obviously trying to recover his way back through the grid, but that was not the greatest who runs out of the final corner. Coming not sure whether he's got any damage or not. You can see Lunacy is back into this fight as well. So he had to pit earlier on after the first safety car, I think. So he gets past uh, Galaz, and so does ACW, who's on fresh medium competitor tyres. And now in the end, we're still behind Kay Walkers here. So you can see getting very, very sideways there is Dan the Racer as well. In, no, this is the battle for 9-10 as uh, Kay Walkers gets a good run coming out of turn 8. There's a little bit of contact between these two. Let's see if we can try and take advantage of this. Kay Walkers go, go, Walker's going to go around the outside. We we'll take advantage of this. Oh, Dan the race and Lunacy is following us as well. So that's three spots lost in the space of about a couple of corners. Oh, maybe just the one corner there for Dan the racer. Of course, he's on the hard cop at a tie. So albeit, obviously, he'll be on a bit more colder rubber later uh, to start with, as Kay Walkers now go. spins the car coming out of turn 13. So all the hard work that he'd done has now gone to waste there. I knew, I think I had an inevitability that was going to happen somewhere along the line, but uh, I didn't think it happened right in front of me here. I think he just ran a little bit too wide at the exit and, and just this car spun on him there. So, uh, but uh, we'll skip a few laps now because basically no not much else happened. The virtual safety car has been deployed. Galas now retires. I think he retired actually in the pit lane. I'm not exactly sure from memory what the virtual safety car uh, was for there, whether somebody else has had a spin or what, or whether there was an actual crash for a reason there. But you can see in the foreground, uh, well, at the, top, at the top left of your screen as well, I actually zoomed in on it. Um, ACW all of a sudden dropped out of the, uh, well, out of my um, 
out of the five there you can see on the top left oh, of the screen. An ACW. As you can see, I'm just now reacting to what on earth happened because to be behind me. Yeah, Frank, I had no idea what the hell had happened, whether he had a spin or or what. So uh, yeah, we'll have a look at some more replays. This is from the, the last safety car restart. So this is the one slick battle for one slick mofo and wafer. These two are teammates, mind you. So mofo gets a warning for his troubles. I think that might have been taken to the stewards. I don't quite remember how that panned out there in the end with that one. I don't know if the warning was removed or not, but um, it's not ideal when two teammates are trying to battle for the same territory and they're in the same pace as uh, okay, so Wafer now reason, will take the take effective race lead now of Bodhod, who of course still has not pitted in this race, so yeah, I think he's there. pretty much now trying to hope for another safety car, maybe to try and save him here, but is that then the virtual safety car gets deployed, so uh, yeah, again, like I said, don't really know what to cause this virtual safety car, is on board with ACW here in the Ferrari I think this was taken to the stewards it, oh, okay. Oh, and there was a little bit of contact there from Lunacy. I don't think, as uh, well, actually, it's a five second penalty for a severe collision with Lunacy, but I don't think there was any contact when I look back on this. No, ACW's just done it all by himself on the curb, and Lunacy unfortunately had nowhere else to go there, so uh, it was really unfortunate there. As we get not the ideal restart, to say the least. I thought for a second there we we're going to lose a spot to Lunacy, as uh, we get a strategy change from Jeff saying to go onto the soft crop at a tyres when, uh, yeah, I even said why, if you could probably tell from a bit earlier on, is now, I think that's Blocky coming into the pit lane, it is so, there's another spot there up in the 8th spot, we're trying to get past his teammate here, Honest Crook into the 7th position but uh, couldn't quite get the run through turn, into turn 1, but uh, again, we still get the DRS here, I'm not really sure whether he's got the DRS as well or not, but uh, you know, I was a bit questioning, uh, Jeff is a bit weird sometimes on F1 2020 to say the least. So I was a bit questioning his strategy. Maybe if there's another late safety car later on, we may go onto the soft crop out of tyres. But for now, we're just basically going to stick on the set of mediums and uh, just go to the end of this race as uh, this Blue Dog just leaves the session here. We're trying to get a good run here on uh, Honest Crook. And I thought I'd catch him napping here, actually coming around turn eight. And we do catch him napping big time as we get up the inside into turn nine. And we get the move done. That was very, very effective there. I felt that was a pretty a decent move there. To, like I said, just to try and catch him napping there. And it's just, just, just uh, well, my word's a bit all over the shop. Just to uh, try to get a bit of fresh air once again, which we do have to the next car, which is actually Smeg in the McLaren. But he's going to actually dive it into the pit lane here come the end of lap 17. So I think he has Smeg not stopped yet in this race either. So... Uh, so now that elevates us now up into six spot. Now we have a bit more fresh air to deal with. Obviously, we get the DRS, thankfully, off Smeg's car, so which I was very thankful for. We stay ahead of Honest Crook, who's under a bit of attack there from Lunacy, I think, for position seven and eight. Which I was hoping they would continue to fight so I can break out of that one second window as uh, I think Lunacy's got the move done officially. Yes, I think he has, but uh, importantly, that's got the one second window we needed to break out of that DRS window. I think it's another two odd seconds up the road to uh, Banana Cake Pie. I think we're staying on board here for this lap because this is actually my fastest lap nuts, of the race. We set a, a green sector time there, 0.09, quicker than our previous best as we pick up our third time penalty of the race. I think that is. Yes, I think it is the third time penalty. So nine seconds worth of penalties now. See also in front, Banana Cake Pie's got zero penalties at this stage as we pick up another warning through turn 12. And so we went green again through sector two there, point one seven eight quicker than our quickest lap time at the moment. I probably would have had the fastest lap of the race earlier on had that safety car not come out while I was trying to do an absolute flying lap on the soft competitor tyres. Might have been challenged maybe a little bit by ACW in that Ferrari, but um, in the end we're still trying to push on here. We're cl starting to close that gap, so we've got some good speed and. Remember, uh, also Banana Cake Pie and also you can probably count in Banana Josh as well. They're on the, the hard cop at tyres. We set our personal best. Jeff, I am not stopping. 23.890. clear, didn't I? So that was our quickest lap of the race. Is uh, Jeff's still telling me that we need to stop again, which I was not having any way, shape or form on that one. So uh, obviously I felt at that point just to oh, shut Jeff, Jeff up. But uh, Jeff is very weird. Sometimes we nearly lose the car coming out of 
uh, turn five there. We're very, very lucky. We've actually picked up another warning. So, well, with another warning away from getting 12 seconds worth of penalties. Is Bodhod still pushing on here? And I think he might be a swap of position here with uh, one slick mofo around the outside, which if he stays here, will be the inside for the next corner. And he gets it done. So mofo makes it a Renault 1-2 once again. I think there's a little bit of a gap back to Banana Josh, who's the next car in the Merc. But uh, back to our battle here, lap 20. We're now caught up right to the back of our sister Red Bull car of uh, Banana Cake Pie, you could call it, considering AlphaTauri is a well, sister team to the Red Bull side. Obviously, formerly Toro Rosso, but now is known as AlphaTauri, thanks to Red Bull's clothing brand. So we're really starting to close up here. We need to get past Banana as quickly as we can. So obviously, you can build that gap because he's got penalties, as we can see here. Oh, D.E. Oh, me. Into the wall. And Banana's now out of the Grand no Prix. contact between me and Banana. I can confirm that. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that one as well because you could see the difference between myself and Banana's no contact point of, on my screen. Uh, well, my, from my point of view, there was definitely no contact. Let's look at the replay here again. Now, it might show a bit of a difference here. Oh, oh dear me. I'm out. I've been killed. Into the wall he goes. Oh, Dean, that's another oh. dead race. Roscoe, well, I'm just punting me off. Yeah, fortunately oh. for Banana, he's not had a great deal of runs in league racing around Australia, and that's unfortunately another DNF. But, um, yeah, I think we did clarify this after the race anyway. You can see the difference here. Now, look at my look at Banana's point of view. Oh. Now, going from the rear view mirror, because obviously he's got oh, the man, rear view mirror, killed. it looked as if I... But I Banana, uh, I had tagged Banana, but when you go back to my point of view, look at the difference here. See, there's, there's no contact at all. Ooh, look at, there was quite a distance between myself and Banana when the contact was made. I mean, I've, I felt very unfortunate there for uh, for, for Banana because I felt like, obviously, that I didn't want to curtail his race like that, to say the least. So, um, but yeah, uh, we did clarify that afterwards. We, I think I may have, did a, I may did a, may have apologized, get my words right again. I may have apologized to Banana Cake Pie there a little bit, and I think it might have been taken to the stewards again. But, um, I mean, I guess, uh, there was not much really I could do. It was just an unfortunate lag incident. As I think another virtual safety car came out because of another uh, DNF. But um, now we're up into uh, position five here as we get back going again on the virtual safety car restart. You see here, Banana Josh is our next target up the road. Here's Bodhold finally peels in. So he's done 20, you know, 20 odd laps, I think, or 21 laps on a set of hard cop and tyres. So he's not a fair distance. So he'll go on a set of soft cop and tyres and go nuts to the end. So now that puts us up into fourth place. Uh, obviously, we've got a fast flying ACW right behind us as well. So he's going to be one to look out for as we go back to the yeah, replay here of Bodhold pitting. Chucking on the set of soft compounded tyres and away he goes. And where's he going to pop out in all this battle here? Might be actually close. There goes Dan the Racer. There goes... I think that might have been Blocky and Smeg. Yeah, again. it is. So he's about to pop back out into 12th place. But he'll have pace to burn on these set of soft compounded tyres here. Here we are back to our battle here. We're still getting very, very sideways with the rear end coming out of turn 9 and 10. I think it was just more just getting on the power way, way too early, to say the least. But um, you see here in the foreground, Smeg's actually got by uh, Blocky. And there's a little bit of contact here between Smeg and, and Dan, the racer. So Smeg taking full advantage of those soft compounded tyres. You can see quite the difference here between uh, Bodhod and Blocky. A little bit of contact going into turn oh, mate, 11 mate, and 12. And uh, not ideal situation to say the least. As Bot has going to send it up the inside here. That's, that's dark orange front wing. Yeah, and unfortunately he's now got front wing damage, so that might curtail his chance of maybe getting a higher position in this race. I don't know whether it was a brake check. I'm not really too sure about that one. As we pick up a Fuck. fourth time penalty of the race, but you did see there, Banana Josh uh, actually made a little error going through turns one and two there, so. And now that's just brought us back, right back into this battle here. Like I said, we've still got ACW right up our rear end. And knowing the pace that ACW's got, he'll probably might still be battling here. And we obviously be, this will be the fight for the podium as we still can't learn from our quarter cutting uh, warnings a little bit earlier on. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to catch the top two 
it's a mere possibility. If we can get past Banana Josh, we might be able to shot, but the tyres are still going to get to the end. And remember, I think Wafer's on the mediums and Mofo is on the hards. So there's actually a difference between both the, the Renault boys. So we come round the penultimate corner here. We're trying to set up a run here on Banana Josh here to try and get, a, a lot. get the job done before turn one and maybe put a car in between myself and... Uh, ACW. We're going to try and go for the move up the inside here. It's pretty close between us. ACW trying to go for the move there as well. No, we go for a spin. And there goes our chance at the podium. Thankfully, the car reversed the right way there. And in the end, I actually only lost the one spot. Actually, I well, take that back. I lost two spots in the end. But uh, it could have been a hell of a lot worse if I pretty much rotated the car like a full 360 and not being able to get going again. So it was really unfortunate. So here's a replay of it once again. So I had a look up the inside here of Banana Josh. You see ACW tried to go for a move around the outside, which wasn't going to happen. But uh, I, I, when I watched this no. back, obviously there was not any contact whatsoever. I think it was just me just getting on the power way too early there in the end. And we lost and lost the spot, like I said, to, to Lunacy in the Red Bull there. Oh, so uh, yeah, pretty much not much we could do there. Really, but I was kicking myself about that one as oh, Smeek runs in a little bit deep at the Fidalba corner. Oh, oh Bodhog gets yeah, very sideways coming out of the final corner. So Smeek takes that spot back again. So it's sort of to and fro between these two. Even though Bodhog's got some front wing, big front wing damage. So got some pretty handy speed here. He'll probably be under steering like a boat around this place. But uh, he gets that move done in the end there. But uh, obviously now with that move, it drops us back down to P6 and well, pretty much the podium is gone. So we're just gonna basically try to survive. I think you see the tire wear. I think it's starting to get a little bit too high as we've we'll started lap 26 of 29 as well. A few laps to go here. So um, looking very, very unlikely here. You can see also the gap back to OP Magic, I think starting to close in as well. So you run very wide and we pick up another three second tight penalty. So. Pretty much I had to go nuts to the end of this race just to see where my finishing position could be at the end of this one. We're still trying to close it. I think we're closing a little bit on lunacy in the foreground, but can we just keep racking up the penalties? That's now 18 seconds worth of time penalties now. So that's not going to help our finishing position later in this race. So as you can see, oh, that is not going to help either. Coming out of turn seven, I just got on the power way, way too early there in the end, but um, yeah, I think in the end, the tyres might have been a little bit shot as well. But um, in the end, unfortunately, it's the way it is. Obviously. So it was a good comeback nonetheless, though. So uh, I think my team, the teammate for this one, OP Magic, actually closed up in the end. MVP got it under one probably. second. So uh, that uh, gaming way for one, the Grand Prix. Uh, I think we're going to finish. Well, I thought we were going to finish in about seventh spot. Well, but I uh, think uh. once these other guys come across the line here, I think it's going to be actually eighth. No, in the end, because P8, Blocky, yeah, Blocky had less penalties. Yeah, Blocky, I think, had a few less penalties compared to us. It was an interesting battle there for seven. Well, it was going to be eight, nine, and ten, I think, in this race. But uh, here we go. This might be an interesting fight here towards the end of the line between Dan the Racer and Otis Crook. I think Otis Crook will get the position in the end due to the more penalties, obviously, to Dan the Racer. There's Kay Walkers coming across the line. And I think Stone Tower, I can't actually quite remember whether he actually... Well, I, th I thought he said his car was still... Thought his car was still racing as well, I'm trying to say. Blocky gets the driver of the day, so... Uh, which, uh, I mean, it was a bit questionable, to say the least, but uh, I'm not going to complain whatsoever. It's just the driver of the day award at the end of the day. So, um, But I think it was pretty close between, like, who made up the more spots uh, between the both of us. He, st he started, I think, 19th. And we started from uh, P20. So uh, there's the podium. So it ended up being... A Renault 1-3, I think, from memory, uh, with ACW splitting the difference between those two there. So uh, we'll have a look at the full race results, if I can actually read them from my previous screen, which are probably going to be very doubtful. So uh, I think it was Wafer that won the Grand Prix ahead of ACW and won the Sick Mofo, so well done to those guys. Uh, Banana Josh, who had to take a bit of fight to the, was the end there, finished up in fourth, and Lunacy in fifth, then OP ended up in P6, like I said, then... Uh, blocking in seventh, myself in eighth. I think Bodhod ninth, and Smeek ran it at Yield ten. Then Otis Crook, uh, Dan the Racer, K Walkers, Stone Tow, and then there's plenty of DNFers, to say the least. I think uh, Stickers Bud, uh, whoever's in that other Red Bull, I can't actually read it from here. It's a bit hard to tell. I think both the Alpha Romeos are out, Mustard Gas and 
Galaz, uh, F1 boy, I think was in there. And uh, you could, you could, uh, you'll see it on your screen there anyway with um, who finished where and the amount of time penalties. I don't know whether anybody survived without getting a time penalty in the end. Well, I mean, if Banana, uh, yeah, that unfortunate incident between Banana Cake Pie and myself did not happen, reckon he might have been the only one that might have not had a single uh, penalty this whole race. But um, there's the uh, the championship standings. Actually, they're on the far right of this screen. You just have to look a little bit further right, obviously. You can see the point standings as well. Oh, not the point standings. Uh, the, well, I mean, you can see where everybody is in there, like who scored what points in these sort of rounds. You can see the the uh, the calendar probably there as well. There's only 11 rounds this season. I don't think I actually put the calendar in there, but uh, you can be able to see it on your screen there anyway, like where the uh, this, cap, this tier is going and whatnot. Point system over to the far left. So um, I think it's basically the same as what it was for like tier two and tier three uh, last season. I think, what was it? Blue, yellow, and diamond tier. Uh, they, uh, they, I only just remembered those. Hard to believe. But uh, I think Mofo is leading the championship over Banana Josh by about four points. It's pretty very close in the championship to say the least. And I think Ferrari are leading at constructor standings. Well, like I said, Amazing how I started this season at Ferrari, obviously, I think from memory. Uh, actually, I forgot ACW was a reserve. So, uh, but uh, obviously, I think from then on, Amazing Al was only a reserve because obviously with his godly pace that he is, I think he might have felt like he might have been taking advantage of everybody else, maybe, to say the least. But uh, with every, uh, the, what's the, the speed difference between like him and the rest of the group, maybe, that might just be me. But... Uh, yeah, you can see where everybody is right up and down there. So uh, it's a nice handy. I think it's, I can't actually remember how many points we scored in that one, but uh, it doesn't really matter at all. So um, like I said, you'll probably see me pop up now and again in this tier once again, very shortly anyway. Oh, well, in this game anyway, these are very late videos to say the least. So smash the like button if you did enjoy this. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Go follow me on my social media channels. They're down in the description. I don't know whether any of the... Dynamic Night Esports uh, social. Well, I don't think they had socials, but any of their channels, like the Twitch and YouTube. They might still have the YouTube channel, so if you want to go check them out, they're down in the description. Um, obviously, there might have been still a link to the Discord, but it's no longer anymore there. So, um, yeah, but until the next time we see each other in Dynamic Night Esports, it is goodbye, and I'll see you all next time.